I'm happen to be in London. I don't come to London just to get the iPhone 10, but it just happen to be in London. See, the thing is, if I stay in Hong Kong, I won't get it for after like a few weeks because in Hong Kong, everyone is getting it for resale. I'm getting it from Carphone Warehouse. Well, Carphone Warehouse is a, is a shop in UK, and as the name suggested, they probably from the 80s when Carphone was the smartphone at that time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, well, well. The box will be all the same. All the content will be the same, but this has to be done. Let's do it. We are going to focus on photography, the camera of the phone. But I probably still should go through some biggest changes on the phone quickly. So of course one of the biggest news party trick is the face ID recognition. The recognition of your face and not the phone. It used uh, whatever million dots to project it on the face. Uh, actually forget all that information. That's for geeks like me to geek about. But what does it really do in real life? So first, of course it recognizes you just like that. What's about on the table? What? Oh, really? I have to do that every single time? Like, because with my old phone, I always unlock it just like that. Oh my god, that's, that's a bit disappointing. In the dark. No problem. One well, of the best thing is that if you're wearing gloves, it works with face ID. So it works most of the time. You don't really have to hold it up to your face every single time. The only thing I miss is unlocking it while it's on the table, just like touch ID. Go on the home button, you are relying on new gesture control. I have no problem getting used to those gesture controls. Actually, I think they are pretty intuitive. Now what we really care about, the camera. You used to only get two lenses with the plus size iPhone, but now the iPhone X, uh, iPhone 10 got it in the body not much bigger than the smaller iPhone 8. With the tele lens, macro shots are surprisingly good. That's really close with the tele lens. <laughs> That's the closest I can get. Well, of course now, even tele lens got optical image stabilization. Previously on iPhone 7, only the wide angle lens has optical image stabilization. After a whole year, the portrait mode got really quite well. The auto white balance really does a great job, especially different light source in this photo mixed together. As I mentioned in my iPhone 8 review, the portrait lighting effects, I really only find the studio effect useful. The other stuff are just a bit weird. Actually not too much of a trouble reaching the top of the phone. Like if I want to tap HDR. Actually fine, kinda. But of course it's easier than the iPhone 8 Plus. I think it's a plus like, oh, oh. In my opinion, portrait mode works the best when the effect is so natural rather than crazy amount of blurriness. Of course, I have to try the slow motion and I come to this skate park. Now, just like the iPhone 8, the iPhone 10 now could do 240 FPS in full HD. If you slow it down to 24 FPS, that's one tenth of the speed. I'm in Camden Town. 
It can't lock. It can't unlock. Oh, hang on. It's the mad hat. With the help of Face ID sensor, the front-facing camera now can do portrait mode as well. But looks like it's not as good as the rear-facing camera. Mr. Mad Hat got a little bit blurred out. Now oh, this is a weird face, weird facing camera. Hello, success. Nighttime inside the car without any lighting. I would say comparable with many wheel cameras like a couple years ago. The same goes to still image quality. And these are all handheld shots. You can always find a phone takes better photos than iPhone, but a new iPhone is always a guarantee as one of the best. So for everyone lucky enough to get one, enjoy it as much as you can, because there will be an even better one coming out in less than a year from now.